Hello guys, Gabe from Vivar speaking here. Uh, today I'm going to show you guys uh, the basics of operating the brainstorm testnet. So let's brainstorm. First, you go to uh, bogodot.js, the arm slash apps, normally. If you've never uh, accessed this before, it will default to uh, go into Polkadot, to the home Polkadot chain. And to access Brainstorm, you go to this corner right here, click here, it will show a, a list of chains. Uh, this is a, a list with uh, sublists, so you can uh, collapse this one. And then you see test networks. If you go to test networks, scroll down a bit, you see Invert Brainstorm testnet. So clicking that, scrolling back up and clicking the switch button will put you in Brainstorm. Now, uh, if you stay here and uh, and you you go back to the first uh, first page, or if you reload, close, open, you will default to the last chain you accessed. So it will default to go into brainstorm, unless you change that. Being here, this, uh, this is a normal uh, normal Bogo.js interface. You can see your accounts here. These are your accounts connected with uh, extensions. You can add accounts from here directly in the Bogo.js interface. You can use other extensions. I uh, like to use Talisman. Uh, you can uh, check chain state in the chain state uh, tab in developer. You can call extrinsics in the extrinsics tab. Basic stuff, we already uh, demonstrated some of that uh, last time we, we ran a testnet, uh, but we don't have to get over that again. Uh, so to get started and actually use Brainstorm, you actually go uh, have to come here to the brainstorm.invarch.network website. This is a simple faucet that we that we are running, and uh, you have your accounts in here. You you can just uh, you you can use an extension and it will automatically connect in here, or you can copy an address and place it here. I'll use the extension that I have. It will, uh, having the extension, it will allow you to click this and choose an account from, from these ones that are connected. I'll choose this one that has zero tokens. Okay, and clicking get tokens, it's going to open uh, open a transaction. You can see that it already sent me 1000 tokens, like 1k. It's still in block. If you wait a, a bit longer, there, finalized block hash. And if you go back here, this is the account. You can see that it now has thousand tokens in the network explorer tab that's transfer from faucet to my account there's that now we can start using uh, the Invarch network Invarch brainstorm testnet okay. to start off let's um, let's pick a file here these are um, these are files that we can uh, we can upload right from the from the Polkadot.js interface to uh, to IPFS. So everything you'll be doing here in regards to files will always be uh, an IPFS hash. So I just uploaded this. We can copy this CID and to get the actual hash, we can go over to uh, this website. This will be cid.ipfs.io. Mine will change the URL because I have the IPFS extension. And you can paste that here, and you see that uh, in multi-hash, you'll get you a digest hex. You can copy this here and use this. So, how do we make, turn this into an NFT in the Invert uh, Brainstorm testnet? We can go to Developer, Extrinsics. And then you see, all, these are all the, the pallets that we have in the, in the testnet. These here, the ones that start with IP, IPF, IPL, IPS, and IPT are the INV4 pellets. These are the pellets that, that, that make up the INV4 protocol. IPF stands for IP files, so we can go to IPF, call the function mint. Let's add some metadata. That was homepage.html, let's call it that. And then you can see this 0x000. We can just leave the 0x here and paste that hex code and copy. So this is the, this is the data. This will be the CID that we, that we just Copy. And submit this transaction because the fees. 
prove every extension will have a different uh, different window. The talisman happens to be the one that I'm using. Uh, we can go to network and we can see that there we go. IPF minted. This here, this number here is the ID, ID7. We can check that if we go to train state, uh, IPF, IPF storage. Let's check ID7. There we go. Owner, 5HG, which is my account. Metadata, and then the data that I added. Um, let's, uh, let's continue. Next stream 6. Let's go then to IPS. IPS has a, a couple things that changed since the last time we we demonstrated this. Let's still have a, let's call this Gabe's website since it has a web page. Uh, okay, so this is the IPS, the, the, the structure to create an IPS. We have the metadata, we have data. This, is a, this will be a list of IPFs, IPF IDs. More specifically, we can add as many as we, we'd like. Let's just add that one. It was ID7. We have the allow replica. We, we already had this. Uh, let's leave it to leave this to know. So this this one this is a new thing, sub assets. This is a list of a list of sub assets that uh they're not specifically tied to the ownership, but are assets that we can control uh, in, from inside the IPS. Let's create one. Let's ha give it ID zero and let's call this um Let's just call it asset zero. Okay, so IP licenses. These are real world licenses tied to your uh, IP. Uh, right now we have Apache 2, GPL v3, or you can add, add custom licenses. Uh, the, the custom field will, will let you add uh, here in bytes. This will be metadata. We could, we, you could, can call this anything you want. Let's say you are adding GPL v2. You can call it GPL v2. And then this is a uh, this is just like the IPFs. This is a CID, so you can you would add a hash just like we got before. Uh, these can be these can be added. We can add more of them by running uh, chain upgrades, uh, runtime upgrades. Let's leave this as GPLv3 for now. Execution threshold. So this this is where IPL comes in. These functions give uh, your IPS. Uh, DAO-like features. So execution threshold is how many votes you, you need to actually execute a, a multi-signature call. So if we set this uh, if we set this to 0 0.50, this will be this would be the equivalent of, of saying uh, we need 50% of, uh, of ownership votes to run this call, to run a call. Default asset weight, this is um this describes the, the default way for assets if we don't specify if we don't specify them in, in the in the storage we'll come back to this later let's leave this uh, in 0, 0.0 now which means that we'll, they'll have no weight and default permission we'll also come back to uh, let's leave this to no for now this is the, the the default permission that uh that assets will have to execute calls if if they're not specified in storage so having the, the set let's um let's submit the transaction see the, the fees, sign and submit, approve, and you can go to explore and we'll see that shortly it will show up here, IPS created. This is the IPS account, every IPS has an account because it's it has DAO-like features. Let's go back to stream 6 and let's, um, let me just show the, the few we have here. So let's actually, uh, so we have allow replica to change, allowing this allow replica to change that one feud in your IPSs. You, you can destroy your IPS. Um, you can create replicas of IPSs, and then we, you, can, uh, you can append and remove data from inside the IPS after it was already created. This, this is what gives composability to it. Let's demonstrate appending, uh, appending data. Let me create, let me get another file here real quick. Let me get this second page. Let's copy the CID, let's put it here. Okay. Hex. Let me make our IPF for that. That one was called second page.html. Okay, so this will be 
IPF88, right? Yes, IPF88. Let's demonstrate how we can add data to an IPS. If we go to we go to IPT and we go to operate multisig, this will allow us to operate multi signature calls from inside the IPS. So since we have this IPF in our account and uh, not inside of the IPS, we have to uh, to change this yes include caller to show the IPS we have the 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 IPF. This here is the IP. Uh, this will be the IPS ID, more specifically the the ID for the IPT, which should be the same. So this this will be the same exact one. Wait, actually, real quick, I forgot to check. That was IPS one. Okay, let me put that again here. Um, IPT operate multisig. Yes. Okay, so this will be one, and if we were calling this as a sub-asset owner instead of the, the root asset, asset owner, we can include this option, and this would be the sub-asset ID. Remember, we created a sub-asset with ID zero, we would add the zero here. That would be sub-asset zero. Sub-asset zero inside of, a, of the overall asset ID one. Um, for the function we are going to execute, let's, add, let's execute uh, IPS append. Again, IPS ID one, and let's append the IPF eight that we just created. We submit this transaction, approve it again. It will show their network in just a second. There we go, IPT multisig executed, IPS appended ID eight. We can go to change state, IPS, IPS storage one, and we can see that it now has IPF eight inside of it. Now let's um, let's go back here. In IPT, we can we can also create sub assets. If I create one, for example, let's uh, actually these has to be called from inside to six. So let's leave this no one IPT create sub asset IPT ID one. And the sub asset will be one. We already have one that that's zero. Let's call it asset one. And this here, uh, this 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 is a list of accounts that we want to um, we want to give assets. So we can create assets and give them uh, give them assets uh, already. So for the asset one, let's give myself some. So this is a this has a, this is an integer that represents the, the balance. So it needs twelve zeros in the end to represent a single unit. So let's do that. Let's let's give one unit. So this is a unit with 12, uh, 12 zeros to represent decimals. And we can submit the transaction. Approve that. We can see that it it will succeed. Okay, in block. Uh, let's keep going here. We can mint. So for example, we could mint just the, the one, the, the, the root access, uh, sorry, asset, or we could mint one of the sub assets. Let's give, uh, let's give myself the sub asset zero. It's the same thing. One unit, we can do that. Again, all while calling from inside uh, the operate multisig function. There we go, finalize. Vote multisig and withdraw vote multisig are exactly what they what they um they sound like. You have to vote if you don't have power to, to execute it by yourself or to withdraw votes. Okay, let's move on to IPL, which is the newer one, newer palette that we didn't have before. Still while operating inside multisig. So here we have to um, two functions. We can set asset weight or set permission. So, for example, here, if you see, I'm operating, uh, I'm running the operate multisig function. If we if we change this, it will change here the call index. So this is what what we use in set permission. So, for example, I can get this. I can put it in here. 
I can set the permission that I want. For example, I want to set yes. And I can say that the sub asset one from my from my from my uh, IPS one can call this function. Okay. Um, if I if I call this, it will give them that permission. Asset weight changes uh, the weight in which that asset will 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 have in the execution for that function. So right now the default is to zero. If I leave this at zero, it will mean that the the asset can call a function, can start a multisig, but it cannot uh, it cannot give any sort of uh, of voting power. If I set this to one, it will have the exact same voting power as um, as the primary, the root a uh, asset, the one that represents ownership. So it will be doing, it will be like doing this. I can give it, I can give it 50, 0 0.50. This will have half the power. We can give it one. It will have 100% power. Um, let's um, let's check that IPL just to to show you. IPL one. Okay, there we go. So IPL holds the license, GNU GPL v3, the CID for the for the license, and the execution threshold, default as a way, default permission. These are the DAO like uh, DAO like uh, parameters. Okay, so going back to to here. This move to executed because I had enough voting power, and it only did. It only uh, I only have enough voting power because I, I am the owner of the the root uh, the root uh, asset, and the the sub assets that I created. If you if you if you check that, I don't have fifty percent anymore because I created more uh, more sub assets. But the way we calculate uh, how much uh, how much you need. For, for the multisig takes into account the 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 weight for the for the sub assets and since I gave them zero weight they they just get ignored so that's why I still have 100% voting power in this so uh, if you want to have more assets but you but you want them to have no voting power you can just give them voting power zero and building upon this you can make any DAO like features for for your DApps. Uh, so again, you have the the exchange six in here. You have the the IN four pellets. You have your faucet in here. Brainstorm the Varsh the network, and you can access all this by going into Polkadot.js test networks in Varsh Brainstorm testnet. So if you guys have any questions, um, you can direct them to to our Discord. discordgg Varsh. Let me show you. This. this will go to our Discord, and then you can ask us questions there. We will always be available to answer them. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on Discord.